I think what I wanted to do is I wanted to take you on a journey that all of you are either gone through or you're on. And it really starts with one thing, and that is with Bitcoin. So many of us are starting into this, this entire um, experience thinking about, you know what, I really want to make money from this. And why am I going to make money? Because Bitcoin is going to go to the moon. This is our objective. Every single one of us has this as our objective. So really what I wanted to do is, is to take you on this journey together from basement dweller to actually blockchain baller. It should have been Bitcoin baller, but hey, what can I say? So really what it means is it all starts with this. We started out with a discovery, and really that discovery was something that we either came to, as an example, came to this conference and said, you know what, this is something that is very, very interesting. I mean, I had a conversation with a guy, I can't even see him because it's dark out there. He's an acupuncturist, and he got into Bitcoin mining because he thought that it would be a nice counterpoint to what he's doing. I would have never guessed that the, the impetus for coming into Bitcoin mining would come from an acupuncturist. But there is this moment of discovery, and then there's this siren song of coming into this and saying, I want to believe in this. This is something that I believe can make a change, not only with myself, but with the whole world. That then brings us to our first Google search. And again, one of the things that we always do is, is we're always afraid to ask questions. Unfortunately, that is a bad, bad behavior on m many of our parts, simply because the only way we're going to learn is if we have the opportunity to ask questions. But what we have is this. We have this once upon a time story, and this is all of our stories, it's not just mine, where we're in the basement, it's dimly lit, it's a dusty computer setup, and we have this dream, this dream of a future mining operation. And really, I chose just a generic name, Bob, that represents all of us, and we're this basement dweller with these big dreams. So what happened is, is that we said, you know what, I want to learn more about this. And so what we did is we started going to networking events, and we realized that we're not alone. There are other people just like us wanting to have this experience and this adventure. And then we learned these new things, this thing called HODL. <laughs> you know, it's an amazing story that how that word even came into being was because it was a misspelled word, but it became literally a touch point for many of us to be a part of this Bitcoin mining. The next thing that we find is, is that we have this moment of enlightenment. We say, aha, now I understand. This is what we have. Just like Peter was saying, this um, is a part of a multi-revolutionary experience for all of us to experience. And then we're introduced to literally the sacred scroll, scrolls, the white paper. But we don't know where to start. And so we start Googling and we start to say to ourselves, what do I do or how can I do it? And I really want the most easy possible way that I can do to start this adventure. So really what we had is this call to adventure. We have this discovery of Bitcoin. We have this desire of digital riches. And we have this dream that we're going to become millionaires overnight. Well, I think I jumped too. That then gets us to where we have, oh, this is not the latest version, but I'm going to skip it. This here. We enter this crypto cave, and we start with this very first mining rig. It's a disaster. It is, all we're doing is, is wiring things up. It's in our basement, and we're trying to say to ourselves, this is the way I can do it. And unfortunately, this is a fire hazard. It's probably against so many different <laughs> permits without having permits that we don't even know what to, to do. And we're going through this learning curve. So it's a journey that we take, that we take from this uh, understanding, this desire to change the world and then come up with an opportunity to actually do so. Part of this process, part of this adventure is exactly this. It's the great power bill shock. 
we have this idea that it really isn't going to consume that much energy. So we look at our normal bill, and then the mining begins. And then we have this bill shock where we start looking at it and saying, are we really understanding what this is really doing for us? Is this a process in which we're going to find something like revenue and profit at the end? Then the other part of it is, is this, the noise. People don't understand how noisy these machines are. They're just immensely. I, mean, I use this image here uh, of a jet engine because that's the same decibels that you get from a Bitcoin miner. And then when you start compounding them with more and more miners, it becomes really quite amazing. So what you end up with is this noise complaint because you have emitting loud sound waves from, the, from your house. You have then neighbors complaining about the noise. And then basically what he's just saying to them is, is, look, this is not noise. This is financial freedom. This is what it sounds like. And again, Peter was bringing up the idea that you would go to your restaurant or your dry cleaners and you would hear the Bitcoin miners in the back. So that then gets us to where we are here at this particular conference, where we're meeting people who can be our mentors. We're really kind of a part of this basement dweller society. And what we find is, is that there are crypto guru gurus out there. And we have these secret handshakes that basically say, here, come join us. This is important for you. It's important for us. And again, one of the things that we do is we learn the ways of HODL. We want to buy more Bitcoin. We get finance from things like Reddit, so r slash Bitcoin. We want to do all these things and be a, a part of this revolution. And again, we all look at this and we say, this is part of the sacred scrolls. It's that original Sakamoto um, Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer financial system, payment system, that we find everything that we want. And of course, this is what happens the very first payday. We get this incremental amount. We pop the champagne. We forget that it costs more than what we just made. And then we start to look at it and say, well, this is amazing. I'm making money, but it doesn't even cover the cost of the electricity. So then we're riding this wave, we're riding this roller coaster, and it's going up and up and up, and it feels really, really great. And what we find is, is we find excitement, and then when we see the price drop, we find panic, despair, and at the bottom, we have hope. So then we try to make this move from the basement dweller into something a little bit better. And we have to try to convince our families, our spouses, our neighbors, that we're not actually creating a meth lab. We have an upgraded system, we have a better explanation for what we do, and we're also expanding our particular mind. So, part of this process, depending on when you entered this, again, this is all of our stories, is we found a great GPU shortage. This was before ASIC miners were really that huge. I even heard recently in this conference that people are still trying to use GPU processors to mine Bitcoin. I don't know how efficient they can be, but they are there. And we ended up with something that we encountered still with ASIC miners, and that is, is there's scarcity. There's competition for the products. We have to find creative ways to actually use these new products to, uh, to continue our adventure. And then there's always this desperation that the odds may not always be in our favor. We also then have these showdowns with our family, our friends, our homeowners associations where there's confrontation, there's an explanation. We try to negotiate with one another uh, as to why we should be doing it and why this revolution is important. And of course, we have this re a resolution. But as we ascend from the basement to, to the ground level, is, is we have this awakening, this idea that this is going to be something that will change not only the world, but it's gonna change my own personal uh, outcomes. We have then the understanding that this really can't be something 
that I just do as an, a side project. I turn it on and leave it alone forever. This is a grind. I now have to learn about flow and power distribution. And uh, <laughs> there's just so many new things that I have to think about that's just beyond, like, I just want to mine Bitcoin. I don't care how difficult it is. But then we come through a moment of breakthrough, and then we find ourselves totally, um, this should have been energized. So, uh, And then we achieve this. Again, this is all of our stories. We have profit at last. And what we find is, is that through persistence and breakthrough and celebration, we find the ability to create future plans for what we want to do. Again, what we end up, we started with, is that we started out as clueless newbies. We became dedicated learners. This conference is that whole uh, structure of becoming a dedicated learner. We then realize that we can be community builders, and then we become the pillars of crypto. Uh, what we find is this, is we find that this is a manifesto uh, for being a miner, and that is, is persistent pays. We should remember that community uh, matters and that humor about what we've done and what we uh, aspire to, uh, it helps us understand what we have. And then, of course, the most important thing to do is to keep hashing. So I really wanted to talk to, uh, then about five things that would be essential for new Bitcoin miners. And this is my advice to you. Begin modestly. Don't jump all the way, feet first in the deep end. Start and learn to understand the technicalities of what you're engaging with. One of the most important aspects of this, and it's often overlooked, and that is, is financial management. You need to understand and research pools, setting up pool mining, and also monitoring the performance of your miners as well as the pools. You need to be sure that you choose the right equipment. Make sure that you're using some of the best ASCII miners. Um, ASIC miners, ASCII. Boy, I'm having a hard time today. Uh, energy efficiency is important. And then really, really d dive down into the cooling solutions, whether it, you're using airflow, whether you're going to use hydro, or whether you're using immersion. Again. The most important part of this is, is understanding the profitability. One of the parts that is rarely spoken about is, is when do you turn your miners off? I mean, we have these uh, demand and response components where we're saying, like, I can actually turn it off to help the grid. But what do you do and when do you make the decision as to my miner is no longer profitable and I need to shut it down? Again, one of the things that small miners face as a problem is, is that you don't secure your mining operations. You have problems with it. You need to make sure that you have firewall protection. You should have two-factor authentication as much as possible. And you should have secure wallets. Again, begin mo uh, I think that went backwards. Uh, begin modestly, understand technicalities and financial management. For your experienced miners, this is my recommendation. You diversify your operations, you improve efficiency, and you stay um, updated with regards to not only the technical uh, aspects of your miners, but also stay updated with the regards to the uh, regulatory aspects. You should leverage advanced tools. All of the uh, vendors out there are talking about the amazing tools that we have uh, that they offer, you should be utilizing them to manage and uh, operate your, your business. You should have automated management as much as possible. One of the things that um, was shown was is uh, uh, a book that I was a co-author on. Actually, the, one of the other co-authors is right here, uh, Ryan Williams, uh, in terms of the ultimate uh, Bitcoin uh, mining handbook. Uh, but you should be trying to look at where AI is going to manage in, the, in terms of the monitoring. You should be looking at how automated management can actually help you operate your business and then track everything through data analytics. Now I want to introduce myself. I am Bryant Nielsen and I am the CEO of the Web3 Certification Board. So you say to yourself, Web3 Certification Board, what is that? What I realized in my experience, and I'll 
just recount just um, the last three or four things that I've done. I have been the director of training, technical training and training for a blockchain protocol. I've been the director of training for a European crypto exchange. Uh, I founded the, the Blockchain Academy uh, back in 2016. Um, I was the uh, chairman of the Government Blockchain Association for four years. Uh, and so I've been deeply invested in the blockchain uh, and crypto community for a long time. Uh, one of the things I realized is, is that certifications has been overlooked by, by all of the technologies, all the firms within this technology space. So it really became important for me to say, I need to create them. And what makes the technologies different, uh, and these are three of the um, certifications that we have, and that is, is we are creating these certifications to help people show that they have the skills and capabilities of understanding what they're doing and what they're talking about. So you have Web3 Plus, here's an example. This is a little faded uh, on the screen. That's Blockchain Plus and then FinTech Plus. We're focusing on the certifications for all of these technologies, including a Bitcoin mining certification. I am one of the co-authors. This is a shameless plug, number one, of the Ultimate Bitcoin Mining Handbook. Um, most of the sponsors and speakers will be getting a copy, uh, courtesy of the conference. Um, and I think they have a few others that, that they're uh, distributing, but you can, you can actually buy this. This is a technical how-to handbook about how to go about Bitcoin mining. If you're less technical, uh, this is a different book that I've done. It's called The Digital Mint. It's how Bitcoin mining shapes cryptocurrency economics. It's a bit of a longer tomb. Uh, it was actually just recently released. But this is an opportunity for you to understand the economic aspects of Bitcoin mining. So this is who I am. You can actually uh, scan my uh, QR code over there. Uh, this is my contact information. Uh, more than happy to answer any of the questions that you have. Uh, and I have 15 minutes. I was planning on doing this at a much longer, slower speed, but because of the way that the uh, the, the panel went, uh, it was really important to hear some of the things they were talking about. So do any of you have any questions about this? And um, yes, you can get them on Amazon.com. Amazon? Yep, you can get them either electronically or um, printed for sure. Yes? Sure, so a certification, um, what makes our certifications of high value versus anybody saying like I can create now a certification? What we realized is the following is, is that we uh, were faced with a, a, literally an onslaught of organizations who say I can certify you. Uh, when I was the director of, of uh, training for a blockchain protocol, we were 250 engineers, and they were trying to expand that engineer base to 500 people. And there was literally no way that, you know, through the interview process, through the CVs, that you could look at a person and say they have any experience whatsoever. Or if they did have any experience, there was no way to validate that experience. Uh, so what we decided to do is, is we said to ourselves, we have to adhere to the highest possible standards. So I don't know if you know ISO, uh, ISO. It's the International Standards Organization. Uh, we are working with the U.S. Uh, organization that manages that uh, for ISO, and that's ANSI. So all of our certifications are going to be uh, ANSI, therefore ISO certified, meaning any organization, any government uh, will accept these certifications as verification of a person's particular skill set. So, then the second question you, is, uh, you asked is, is, how do I go about then, let's go back to that. How do, how do I obtain these things? Well, uh, what we do is, is part of this process is we have to identify what skills you actually need to have uh, to be a part of uh, this certification and then we build coursework around that. So in uh, all three of these certifications, uh, there's four classes, actually the FinTech one is five classes. Uh, it's about 24, 25 hours of, of lecture and then about 15 hours worth of, of homework you have to do. Uh, there's 
uh, multiple assessments that you have to be taken along the way. And that then, once you've completed all these courses, you can then take actually the certification assessment. Uh, if you're familiar with, like, say, like CompTIA, so CompTIA has A+, Network+, Plus, Security+, Plus, uh, that's the model that we've actually uh, followed. Uh, so that's why we, we use the plus symbols uh, as an example. Uh, but you have to then take a, a, an assessment. Um, you can take it up to two times uh, with pain for only once. Uh, and it's essentially 75 questions out of a pool of 150. So if the three of you, as an example, were taking this exam, it would be different for all three of you, including the order of the questions. But you would have to pass it with a 70% pass rate and then you would get this certification. And our certifications, we eat our own dog food, so our certifications go onto the blockchain and you get an NFT. So, yeah. Any other questions? Yes, so um, we wanted to make it as easy as possible for people to have the opportunity to take the assessments. And, a lot of other assessment groups, uh, certification boards require you to go into, say, a Pearson's uh, testing set, uh, group, uh, which is sometimes inconvenient to you, uh, especially if you're working and used to a remote type of situation. So uh, what we did is we work with uh, another company to create um, both AI and human proctored assessments. So. Um, the AI actually flags if you start cheating. Uh, so what it does is it looks, uh, it requires you to shut down all of your browser windows, uh, but if you kept a, a separate window open and it sees your eyes going to a separate screen, uh, it starts to flag you. Uh, then a human comes in and says, you know, are, is this really happening? Or if someone comes behind you, the AI is looking at that from a proctored standpoint to say, you know, you can't have people whispering, you can't be looking at your phone for answers. This is something you have to answer by yourself. So we work that as part of the um, ISO uh, standard. And with that, uh, you're going to get seven minutes back. Anyway, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.